notifications. My name is Dale Tran, and you are watching Zen and the Art of Hero Making for Legion. Legion comes out in a grand hero battle. You can get him in four or three stars. We're going to be taking a look at the five star builds here that I have to show you today. And then I'll give you a couple of uh, pieces of uh, what I think are really good and really bad about him. Right now we can see his default kit. Uh, he has 25, 45 wins, 5 losses, and 85. Those are somewhere in between. Legion's Axe is a really cool uh, weapon. It has 14 might, and it's going to actually be applying panic onto whoever uh, is on the receiving end of this. Reprisal is a skill that he has, and then he comes with Fury 3 and Obstruct 3. Funny thing is, is you don't really want Obstruct 3 on this guy at all. His defenses are terrible. 22 and 18 for resistance. That's not good. On the other hand, he has a 36 uh, strength. He has a 35 speed. That's really good. Uh, that is competing for the highest uh, speed out of all the greens. And that's really high for strength for many different heroes. So his default is, is he has 50 attack whenever he has uh, the Legion's uh, X equipped. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few things here because Fury 3 is not a good skill on him, in my opinion. Uh, we're going to take a look at a build here called Double Tap. 97, 11, and 31. Let's have another set of stats there, 97, 29, and 13. This puts on a Brave Axe. He has a wonderful set of skill uh, stat points for this. So let's just go ahead and give it to him. We put Brave Axe on him. We give him Luna. That gives him a little bit of uh, staying power so that he can continue to deal damage he, as he uh, starts uh, tromping around the battlefield. This is spec out with Life and Death 3. You could do Life and Death 2. Uh, Swift Sparrow is a lot better than Life and Death 2. It's roughly the same amount of wins you're looking at. 94-ish, 92-ish, but the Life and Death 2 uh, makes you really susceptible to a lot more Sword Lords, whereas with uh, uh, Swift Sparrow, you're not bringing that liability into things. And then, of course, we have Desperation 3 on here. I'm not recommending that you use Arden Sacrifice. If you really want to have something to accelerate into Desperation 3, you can go ahead and get Reciprocal Aid. But here's the thing, he has 46 hit points, so one Arden Sacrifice isn't going to do it. And Fury could get you down there eventually. Gauging in combat, yeah, that's fine. The reason why I like Desperation on the double tap build is he could quad once in a while. There's some people that he could just wreck, and that'll be a lot of fun, especially if you uh, do some Tempest uh, trials. But that second set of stats over there, 97, 29, 13, that's whenever he has Desperation on. There, he's just so consistent. And this is very important because his defenses are garbage. So you need to be able to have somebody who can just march right along and continue to keep the killing going. And that's what this build does for you. You're a little worse off if you go the uh, budget route of Life and Death 2 or the not as budget route of Swift Sparrow 2. But otherwise, this is a wonderful build and it pretty much just picks things up and over and it just keeps on going with it. Uh, this guy... One thing we're going to notice is that he's always going to lose against Hector if we initiate. He could take one hit from Hector, but if we initiate the combat in Hector, every single build, including the vanilla, this, and the next build, he just is going to die too. So don't ever engage Hector. Um, unlike the first build, the first build didn't have enough umph with Fury to be able to actually get past the uh, heavy blue armor like Effie or Lucas. This build does which is really, really nice. The, um, you will draw against Effie if you go down to Life and Death 2. Uh, you're also leaving uh, a few random people. You're like leaving Gaius and Matthew on the board. You're leaving Perion on the board. Uh, you're leaving Sheena on the board. I mean, no one that's important in PvP, but you are losing a lot more to more Sword Lords. I would uh, prefer that you stay away from Life or Death 2 for the most part. Uh, unless you're really constrained on things. So let's, uh, oh, and if you go, if you keep this Fury, if you're trying to go really cheap, you're looking more at like 87 kills. You're losing 10 uh, kills here. None of them are necessarily super high profile, but they're, they're around. And of course, if you're looking at him for a PvE environment, you're going to need all the kills you can get. 
Next one's called Repo Man because it keeps the axe on him, and <laughs> it, with keeping that axe, it, what adding panic means is it flips all the bonuses into penalties on them. Uh, 96 and 43 is what we're dealing with here. He has a lot better consistency with Moombo. If you put Luna on him, you have less kills overall, but once Luna charges up, you're going to you'll have a nice little spike there. But Moombo keeps him more consistent, so that's what I recommend. Going budget, you can give him life and death too. And if underneath this, I have Vantage 3 there, the 56 that's in parentheses there, that's there so that we can, that, that's how many people he could kill with Vantage uh, once he uh, gets going. So basically that's his one hit kill threshold there. The 43 that he has a draw against, Almost all of those people, if you attack uh, the Repo Man, he'll go ahead and retaliate on, which is wonderful. That uh, means that he has a wider range of people that he can handle all on his own. Problem is, is he, he's going to need to re rehabilitate from a healer right away. Otherwise, you pretty much have spent him his one shot, and that's it. Um, once again, you lose to Hector. You can't fight off Effie still with this build. You are also uh, leaving Minerva, Anna, Bardra, Baruka, Sheena, Bowie, uh, Jafar, Setsuna, and uh, Garius on the table there for, uh, you know, to just chill around there, but that's, that's no big deal. They're not, except for Setsuna, there's nothing in Minerva. You don't see any of these guys in PvP, but if you do PvE stuff, once again, that's something that you probably would have to keep in mind. You have to have a solution to that. So it's a good handful of those. If you want to emphasize Legion's axe a little bit more, what I recommend is kicking out your advantage and putting in something like hit and run, drag back, not lunge, but some other movement-based B skill so that you can get Legion in there remove the buffs and come back because think about it he's not benefiting from his own panic he removes the buffs and puts on the debuffs for the next schmuck to do it so if you have hit or hit and run he leaves that space for someone to walk up and uh, take care of it if you put on drag back he will bring that person back so that someone can lob something up over his head he is a much, he's a decent support unit in this particular role he can block a lot of blues, he can uh, withstand uh, assaults from most greens, and yet he's really, at this point, he is meant to be a team player. I haven't bothered to talk about any skills for his uh, C slot, and that's because it's way too variable for him. He has a good bit of extra survivability by giving him a threatened attack. Threat and Defense uh, helps him out in the more extreme builds, like with Life and Death 3. Otherwise, the bumps aren't that great. And actually, that note, I'm going to come to my thoughts on Legion. For a PvE, wow, this guy is incredible. If you don't have a good green unit, you definitely need to have Legion. Go out there, get him, upgrade him to 5 stars, you're going to be happy. He's going to be a beast. Just don't let him get hit. <sighs> but... Outside of that, for PvP, I don't see him being that important. When it comes down to it, he does things slightly better than Raven. He does things noticeably better than Anna, but Anna has a few tricks up her sleeve. She has more interesting builds that you can actually put into her. And what's missing is not PvP arena material. You're not the ground that Legion's covering is not PvP material over top of Raven and Anna. So honestly, it, it's my... I hate to say it, guys, but Legion is just is just short of being phenomenal. I could see him being really high on a lot of people's lists, but I don't see him being anything better than Raven or Anna at the end of the day, because he's not going to perform for you in the same or in any different capacity than either one of them especially considering that legion's gonna be around for one set and then you're gonna our one pvp uh session and then you're gonna have to make sure he's level 40 so that you can get that one orb i don't know two months later to be able to handle any kind of rematches of the grand uh, hero battle that he's in 
Whereas with Anna, he, she's always going to be needed for quests. She's always going to be in a uh, season rotation for PvP. Just And everyone has her. <laughs> everyone has her and can get her to five stars if that's what they choose. So, unpopular opinion. Legion is not necessarily going to be something that you're going to be seeing a lot in PvP. PvE, Tempest Trials, Story Mode... He can handle a lot of the random craft that gets thrown around there. But otherwise, he's not bringing anything new to the table. But he definitely looks cool. His voice is really great. His uh, combat's neat. And uh, his confession is it, it is funny. Uh, to me, anyway. I just I, I love the, uh, the quirkiness in his speech. So, definitely go out there and get him. If you don't have very many green units... Build them up. If you have some green units already, or if you're just sitting there looking at Anna, um, I would invest in her before you invest in Legion. So until next time, take care.